We on continues to bring you a comprehensive coverage on coronavirus. We focus on India and there's latest update coming in and that's the infected toll in India has now leaped to 169, including the three deaths reported from Delhi, Karnataka and Maharashtra. On your screens is the latest data of the current situation in India, which we've broken out on this map. Maharashtra remains the worst hit with 45 cases, followed by 27 infected cases in Kerala and 17 in India's most populous state of Uttar Pradesh. Positive cases of coronavirus have also been identified in Raipur, Chandigarh and Srinagar. And seven Indonesian nationals in the southern state of Telangana have also tested positive. The confirmed case in Raipur is a female patient with a travel history to London. And so undeniably, India is at a crucial juncture in the COVID-19 outbreak. The virus is still spreading from individuals who have been abroad. This is called stage two. Community transmission or stage three has not been reported yet. And fortunately so, there are more Indians infected abroad than within the borders. As many as 276 Indians abroad are said to have caught the virus. Of these 255 cases are in Iran, 12 in the United Arab Emirates, five in Italy and one each in Hong Kong, Kuwait, Rwanda and Sri Lanka. In Srinagar, one positive case has been reported. The patient has a history of foreign travel and arrived in India on March 16. Authorities will be observing residents within a 300 meter radius for possible symptoms. The patient is currently in isolation. As the Sabdarjang Hospital in New Delhi, all elective surgeries have been cancelled as being confirmed by this hospital. The IMS administration, meanwhile, has decided to postpone all outpatient appointments. Hospitals across India are trying to free up their medical staff so that they can focus on tackling the outbreak. In Delhi's Saftarjung Hospital, a suspected COVID-19 patient committed suicide by jumping from the seventh floor. The patient was admitted on Wednesday after returning from Sydney. The HRD Ministry has called for the postponement of all examinations. The new exam dates will be announced on March 31st. Once the ministry completes a review of the situation, all school, university and college examinations in Jammu and Kashmir have also been postponed. The government has also imposed Section 144 in Baramula district in Jammu and Kashmir and the Davangare district in Karnataka. This means that large gatherings will not be permitted in both the districts. Meanwhile, evacuations are very much on. A total of 591 Indians have been rescued from Iran so far. 201 were brought back. They're being quarantined at the army facility in Jaisalmer. And here's what you can expect later during the day. All eyes will be on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi as he addresses the nation on the coronavirus outbreak. Here at We On World is One, we are asking a couple of important questions. What path will the Indian Prime Minister choose? Are citywide lockdowns on the Prime Minister's radar? Will he announce a financial stimulus package? Let's explore the possibilities. Nationalization of medical infrastructure is a possibility. Spain has in fact already done this. All private hospitals in Spain have been placed under government control. Now bear in mind the situation in Spain is far worse. In India, 58% of all hospitals are private. They account for 29% of hospital beds and 81% of all doctors. So private medical infrastructure could be crucial. Lockdowns. Will the Prime Minister take a leaf out of the Chinese playbook? Most European countries have locked down virus hit areas, but India does not have a virus hotspot as of now. Cases are distributed across the country, so it remains to be seen if a lockdown will be as effective in India or not. But a complete ban on foreign travellers cannot be ruled out. What role will the private sector play? 
Now, in Saudi Arabia, the government has asked companies to enforce work from home. And Donald Trump too has decided to marshal private companies during this crisis. The government could ask companies to provide paid leaves to people who are vulnerable to the infection. More than 10 million Indians work in the private sector, so their partnership is important for a seamless social isolation exercise. The markets have been tanking all week over the outbreak. Putting money into people's hands is the need of the hour, so direct money transfers are a possibility right now. The United States is planning to give every American citizen $1,000 to wade through the crisis. In India, Uttar Pradesh is mulling direct transfers into the accounts of daily wage labourers. Testing is another important aspect which has to be explored. India has been taking some flack on this front, while countries like South Korea are testing 4,800 people per million population. India is only testing seven. The government feels that in the absence of community transmission, universal testing is unnecessary. Presently, the government is only testing people with symptoms and people who've travelled abroad. Now, the Indian Prime Minister also has another major decision to make. Should the Indian Army be called in? The Army's expertise could be vital in halting the outbreak at Stage 2 and preventing community transmission. They can support the civilian medical staff and prop up the medical infrastructure. We'll have all the answers come 8 p.m. IST today. So stay tuned to We on World is One as the Prime Minister chalks out India's strategy to stay ahead of the COVID-19 curve.